Hello guys, uh, welcome to the first of hopefully many videos that I'm going to be doing um, over the next few weeks. My name is Sam, I'm a developer. I've got about 10 years experience behind me doing front-end development, working in London and I have my own business and we also do development so I kind of get my hands dirty every so often in those projects. I'm a huge advocate of web uh, fundamentals, so HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Um, why we write them, why we write it in certain ways and, 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 and trying to encourage people to not forget those things. So I, I love Webflow. I think it's empowering so many designers and developers to, to create really interactive, beautiful websites very, very easily. It's actually incredible how, how quickly you can spin up a website. Even from a senior developer standpoint, it would take you quite a while to write. So it's a really, really powerful tool. The whole idea behind this series is um, I see people and, and designers and creating amazing websites on uh, Webflow, in Webflow. When I look at the code, which you can do on any website um, just by inspecting, when I look at the code, I can actually tell that what they've done um, it, it, it's not written correctly if you were to write this thing in code. And there are many reasons why you need to write code correctly. And I won't go into it into this little introduction, but throughout the series that I'm going to do, I'm going to talk more about why we do certain things and how you can achieve that in Webflow. So hopefully I'm going to be bridging the gap between developer and designer and a, a Webflow expert, helping you create websites that look great, but the underlying code is also very functional and that you understand what you're doing. So without further ado, um, this will be my first video on the document outline. And if you don't know what the document outline is, um, essentially it's a table of contents for your web page. So every single every single web page is kind of broken up uh, using headings. So from a design perspective, it, there's a there's a visual hierarchy that you can see. So I can I can pretty much guarantee that um, something around here, although you know we'll get into this, but that might not necessarily be a H1. Um, and this would be like a the next level heading. So build. So break that up into a heading. You've got a launch heading. Uh, grow heading and get up and running faster. And there's a way of doing this in code using headings, which again forms a document outline. There are six headings um, you can use from one to six. Um, and H1 being the highest, like I say, it's going to be what would describe the function of that page. So, I mean, let's even just look here now. Um, H1. So they have made that a H1. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say this is. Um, descriptive and, and I'll get into why that it needs to be descriptive now but this is essentially the H1 and there should only be one H1 on the page and I'm guessing this would be a H2 because it's associated there we go H2 and then already you can see there that we've got a H3 because this heading is associated with this H2 and um, what happens then, when the next H1 you see because a web page will read the document from top to bottom when we see another, if we see a H4, we know that that H4 is associated with this H3. But what I'm going to guess right now is that we jump straight into a H2, which breaks it out of the flow, breaks out of the flow of this build section and launches us back in, <laughs> launches us back into the launch section, which again would be a H3. Um, these could actually be H4s. So let's have a look at that there. So they are H3s again. So um, what they're saying is that this heading is to do with launch. This heading is to do with launch. 99% uptime is to do with launch. It's all associated. And then once again, we break out of that current section, that current chapter, if you will. And then we've, we've broken back out by having a heading two and then a, its own set of H3s. You've got to remember that these the document outline is not about the look of these headings. Now, a H1 will be rendered bigger than a H2. And just because a heading isn't the correct size, you don't go making it a H1 just because it's too small. What you do, you use the the control, uh, the CSS and the controls within Webflow to make it the size that you want. It, it is a H2. If it needs to be a H2, you leave it as a H2 and you use styling to then change the look and feel of it afterwards. 
HTML should not be about style at all. There, it's literally to um, tell a computer what to do with these um, to do with these tags, right? So now we get into kind of um, why you would create, why you need to create headings. What's the what's the big idea? Well, first of all, I mean, like I say, from a design perspective, it breaks it up. You've got this visual hierarchy of what comes next and, and where your eye follows around. So that's just from a visual standpoint. But from, from, a, from a coding standpoint and a computer standpoint, Google actually uses headings to understand your page and what it's about. But you're giving your website the best chance of, of survival if you use headings correctly and allowing Google to understand your page. So... The, the other aspect of that is, is these are really good places to put keywords in um, about your website. So if you want to rank specifically for web design, you want to make sure that web and design and, and graphics and sketch or whatever tool, you want to make sure these types of words are kind of sneaking their way into, into these uh, headings because it's a good way to rank for SEO, particularly the H1, which is why I don't think this is necessarily a good H1. Code is probably the best keyword there, but nothing really, nothing here makes sense. And I'll go into how you can kind of sneaky, sneakily add some decent keywords in there while still it being a functional website. Because if you're too sneaky with Google, it will punish you and it will it will sort of lower rank you that your website. So we will do it in a, in a correct way, I guess. The third uh, most important thing is screen readers. So if there are disabled users coming onto your website or just, just people using um, a, sc a screen recorder, which announces and reads out the text because let's say, for example, they're blind, um, they can choose to navigate your website using just the headings. I've worked with um, disabled uh, users to try and understand how they use websites better. And a lot of them, they do, they, they quickly just scan through the page um, just using headings to understand, is this the site? It, do I want to read anything more um, on this page? So it's really good for accessibility as well. And, and really, you know, across the board, these three things are the main reasons why you want your code to be um, correct and written correctly. Those are the kind of top things you'll, you'll hear me repeat again. So let's jump into uh, Webflow and we'll... We'll, we'll dive into how you can actually start creating this. Okay, so we're going to dive right into the how you can kind of um, sneakily get keywords into your headings, but also write the correct um, heading structure and create the correct heading structure. So here we are in a, in a project um, of mine in Webflow. And what you can see right now is what you would typically understand as being the, the H1 or the heading of the page now again to me this isn't really what the page is about you know you, you could you could maybe describe that uh, this could be the h1 just like webflow have on their website but i wanted to i wanted to create my h1 um on the on my page and it to be super clear what this page was about so what i've done um and if you're not you know I guess I'm assuming that you're you're fairly familiar with Webflow at this this stage, so I, I feel like I'm okay to kind of jump into a project like this. Here we have a uh, div, and what what this piece of text is is just a paragraph. That's all that is is it's just a paragraph of text, and above here, I've created a H1, and you can you know by adding a by adding a header, headings are just here. You add a header. And then you can choose the different levels. You might have wondered why they're like these. You can select different headings here, but um, I know this wants to be a H1. Again, I'm completely disregarding the uh, design of it. You know, whether it's bigger or smaller, it doesn't matter. But what I've also done, and I'll delete that because I don't need that anymore. Um, what I've also done is now this is a, a, a tactic to, as you can see here, it's kind of completely flattened. And I've added an SR only class, which is a bootstrap convention. If you don't know anything about bootstrap, don't worry. It just means screen reader only. And there are certain properties you can add to um, your, your element to make it so that it's visually hidden, but a computer like Google can still read that heading. You've got a width of one, a height of one. You've got margins to make sure it flattens. 
we're, position, we're positioning it kind of in a random place off the screen. Um, there are various ways you're going to hide um, your elements. And what this piece of text actually says, if I, if I make that um, static, let's try, let's try and get this, um, let's try and see what this text is. It's brand strategy and design studio for technology. Now that's exactly what I want to describe as my H1. And you can see there's plenty of keywords in there. Um, if you can't read that, sorry, let me just select it. Um, there's plenty of keywords in that, but also it, it does describe the page. So I've written, my, I've, I've, I've understood that that's what, that's what my H1 should be. And, um, and I've added the certain, I'm going to undo everything that I've just done there. Here we go. I've done everything I can to make sure that this is hidden and but i've still got that h1 now as you scroll down the page you can you can see that there this is the kind of next section of my of my um website again you can see there's kind of lots of keywords here um and then that's where i would put my h2 now i know this website and i know that i don't think we have a, a h3 uh, we might do down here actually let's have a little look um here we go so this is probably a H2 as well, which it is. And then, so how do we do it? And then you've got these, which is a H3 here, a heading three here. Let's open that out a little bit. Um, and this, this now means that this H3 is related to this H2 because it's next, again, you it's understanding the document line by line. And if it, if it, if we, encounter a heading and it's say a h3 then it and the previous one was a h2 then it will it the computer understands that that h3 is related to that h2 to be honest in my experience it's quite rare to go anything deeper than a h h3 um or a h4 but so what does this now look like so here's the website and i've got a special plugin here called i don't actually know what it's called headings map and i'm using firefox here um, it allows me to see the the structure, the, the the heading structure of the page, and and as you can see, this is beautifully kind of nested within each other. If I collapse all the H twos, you can say that you can visually see that they're they're related to this H one. Now, again, you should not have more than one H one on the page because there's there's typically no more. Um, there's no that's that's what this page is about. But here you can see all these H2s are related and the, and, the, and the headings that have H3s next to them, you can see there that how do we do it strategy. So I think the others aren't showing up because it's because they're hidden. Um, and and it's not this, this plugin for whatever reason isn't loading the hidden ones, but they're there on the page, they're there in the code and that's what Google is reading and understanding. So, that's kind of that's how you want your website to look you want the, a natural logical um hierarchy of of content really so you can quickly and easily navigate through them so that's headings and i don't think there's any anything more to to go through there um about headings specifically but i guess a reminder to to really make sure that you're you're when you choose a heading you're not choosing headings just for the style or the size of them you're choosing them for the what they call semantic meaning of the of the headings like what's the purpose of it and and then go through and 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 do this do the styling and do do the layout in a as a separate task typically i would create all my html so i'm just about to jump into another project here which i've got um and you can really see this is the way i typically work i will i'll just block it out i've started to do some styling here but it's very very basic and it's just it's just to try and it's just to try and uh, sort of block out the HTML elements. Trying to use the correct um, heading heading tags, um, the correct elements that are required for Google to understand the page. So there we go. So if you've enjoyed this episode and you want to see more, I'm going to be doing I'm going to be trying to release one of these videos every single day this week to try and get us through this uh, period of craziness going on that's affecting the world today. Um, and, and try and teach Webflow designers to just think a bit more carefully about the code they're writing. And so really you can have a, a way more effective website. Um, please like show the support that uh, you wanna see more of these by liking this video. Leave me some comments if you have any questions or anything like that. I would, I would love to help out and clear 
clear those up in um, in the comments section. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.